Now that the evaporator is installed, it's time to install the condensing unit. Locate an area that will allow proper ventilation and servicing of the unit. The condensing unit can be installed in a well-ventilated area inside of a home or outside. For this particular installation, the condensing unit is being installed outside. The condensing unit needs at least three feet of clearance in front of the condenser coil and behind the compressor. When using the optional housing, make sure to center the condensing unit and align the condenser coil with the back edge of the base. Mount the unit to the base and install the side and back panel. Run a line set from the evaporator unit to the condensing unit. Make sure to size the refrigerant lines in accordance with the line set sizing chart in the WhisperCool Tech Manual. When running the line set, make sure to keep the ends sealed until you are ready to dry fit the tubes. Dry fit the refrigerant lines to the condensing unit and the evaporator unit. Installing a Schrader type access valve on the suction line at the outlet of the evaporator will make it easier to check the vacuum level and superheat. Make sure to remove the Schrader core prior to starting the brazing process. Remove the valve stem and access port caps. Using a service wrench, backseat the king valve and suction line service valve. Make sure to come off the back seat a half a turn. This will open the refrigerant lines and access ports. Wrap the king valve and suction line service valve with a wet rag to prevent overheating the valves. Plug in the evaporator unit to energize the solenoid valve. This will allow nitrogen to flow and will help speed up the evacuation process. Purge nitrogen through the refrigerant lines and braze all joints. Once brazing is complete, inspect all braze joints for defects. Reinstall the Schrader core in the access port on the suction line at the evaporator unit. Pressure testing is necessary to ensure there are no leaks. Connect a nitrogen tank with a regulator valve to the suction line service valve and king valve. Pressurize the system to 200 PSIG and allow the system to sit pressurized for a period of 20 minutes. Check the pressure gauge to see if there's been a pressure drop. If there has been a drop in pressure, there is a leak and it must be repaired. Repair the leak and repeat the process until you have confirmed there are no leaks. If there's no pressure drop, you are ready to move on to the evacuation process. Refrigeration systems must be properly evacuated prior to charging to prevent unwanted molecules mainly water vapor, from damaging the system. The vacuum pump should have clean oil in its reservoir and be able to achieve a deep vacuum. Connect the vacuum hose from the gauge manifold set to the vacuum pump. Connect the micron gauge to the access port on the suction line. Turn on the vacuum pump, open the valves on your manifold gauge set, and allow the vacuum pump to run until it achieves a 200 micron level. This generally takes two to four hours depending on the amount of moisture and non-condensables allowed to enter the system and the amount of restrictions within the system. Close the valves on your manifold gauge set and shut off the vacuum pump. Perform a vacuum check by allowing the system to sit in a vacuum for a period of 10 minutes. Monitor the vacuum gauge. If the gauge pressure does not rise more than 50 microns, the moisture has been removed from the system and it's time to move on to the charging process. This concludes part two of the split system installation video. Click on one of the links to view part one or part three.